My name is Tyler, I'm with Bright Agri Tech, and in this video, I wanna show you how easy it is to start growing with Zipgrow Towers by building your own DIY hydroponic system. So what we're gonna talk about first is basic dimensions that you need to think about when you're building your own system, how to conform those dimensions so you can add proper lighting, and then plumbing that system. So let's talk about this PVC frame, which provides a foundation for our entire system, and it costs us nearly nothing. We got the PVC lengths for free, we just had to buy some fittings for it. What we want to do is create a closed loop system. We want to pump our nutrient solution to the top of our towers, and then it'll drain through our towers back into our sump. The easiest way to do that is to position your towers above your sump. We'll be using three foot towers for this DIY tutorial. And we've bought this 18 gallon tote from Walmart, which will work for our sump. And there's a couple key things that you have to keep in mind, a couple key dimensions actually, so that way your sump provides your towers with adequate spacing for light and plant growth. And so when we hang our towers above our sump, we want 15 to 20 inches from front to back of our towers, so that way our crops can grow out and forward, but then also so our lights are close enough to our towers. But then we want to space our towers apart from each other about five to eight inches roughly. What we don't want to see is when our crops grow out for them to cover the towers next to them and then our plants start fighting for light. And this structure provides that. And so the height that we hang our towers off of is completely dependent on our sump size or our sump height. So our sump sits at 15 inches off the ground. And then what I like to do is take a tower by the hanger hold it just inside my sump, and that gives me my height as to where I'll put the top of my frame. So with this sump being 15 inches tall, I knew that by hanging my tower over it, that I'd have to hang my tower at 56 to 57 inches above the ground, so that way the bottom inch or inch and a half of my tower sat just inside the lid of my sump. And what that'll do is keep all my towers somewhat secure in my sump, so if this frame moves or someone pushes it, they're not swinging around and above it and then you're not, you don't have any problems with leaks or water getting anywhere. So what I did is I built the frame, hung my towers above my sump, and then I marked out the bottom of my towers on my sump, which happened to be just as far out as I could get on this tote in the corners. And that left me just enough space for all my towers. With this size sump, what I have is 13 inches from the front to the back of my towers, which is just barely enough, and I have five and a half inches between my towers. And what we've done on the top of our framework is added a crossbar in here so we can mount two T5 lights right behind the first set of towers, and that'll provide our back towers with light. And then we've extended our frame, you know, 15 inches forward, and we'll hang two more T5 lights right here to supply our front towers with light. Now, if you're going outside, you probably don't have to worry about adding artificial lighting, but it's October here in Wyoming at the time of making this video, and we're gonna be putting this thing inside in our office and growing, so we're putting one light per tower. I've hung my lights, and you can see how this gives us like a nice compact design for a four tower setup. From here, what you do is you want to plumb your system, which is you know, just a matter of dropping an Aqua Active 400 pump in the sump, running a half inch poly out and around the top, and then draining everything into the top of your towers using button drippers and quarter inch poly. But to do that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to move over to this other system, simply because it's already plumbed and it's actually what we're going to be using in our office, and it's got some additional features that I want to walk you guys through that makes growing like really easy. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this rack is built off the same dimensions as that rack. You know, the height that we're hanging our towers is the same. The height of our sump is the same. The only thing that we've done is that we've elevated our sump onto a platform and put it on wheels. And then we've added two bars on the inside of here that we're hanging our lights off of. And we've just drilled some holes in two by fours. And what that allows us to do is mount our lights to that two by four partition and be able to move our lights back and forth. And so when we plant these towers, which we're gonna do after this, we're able to move our lights right on top of those ceilings. And then as they grow, we can pull our lights back. So it's the same idea, same dimensions, just a little bit more functionality. Um, right now I wanna walk you guys over, or walk you through how we've plumbed this system in. We've used one length of half inch black tubing, and we haven't cut it or put any type of fittings on it. And we do that to like avoid pull, uh, points of failure, places where things can leak. And so what we like to do is we're gonna run this from the outside of our sump right here in the middle and just loop it around the big loop so that way we're not kinking it. Fix it to the top. Actually, the best way to do this is to put it around the frame first, get it fixed in place where you want it, and then run it to your sump. If you try to do it the other way around, your sump messes with you. And if you have a long enough piece of tubing, it's easier to do this and then down to your pump. So once we have this main line fixed to the top and we know there's enough length that it'll go to our pump, what we've done is we've marked out um, a, a spot where we can punch a button dripper into that black poly tubing. And then from that button dripper, we've connected quarter inch poly tubing and ran that directly into our towers. And the reason that we do that, we don't just let the button drippers drip into the towers, is one, if it moves, and two, these are positioned really close to our lights and we want to avoid any splash or any water getting on our lights. Other than that, we have folded off the back end of the poly tubing and just put like a two inch piece of three quarter inch tubing over that and that fold will keep any water from leaking out. After you get everything kind of fixed in place, you want to test your system. It might be worth removing your lights, filling your sump with water, connecting this tubing, and plugging your pump in to see if there's any leaks or anything that you need to avoid. So this rack cost is actually next to nothing as well. All this wood we scavenged from our greenhouse. The paint was left over from another project. And the wheels cost us like three bucks a piece at Walmart. So I hope this helps you guys kind of visualize your own system. I hope you take what we've done here, we've, we've built upon it. Just remember that you want to give your towers adequate spacing and that kind of is dependent on your sump. And then you want to position your towers just slightly inside your sump so that way you can move this around and your towers aren't gonna leak everywhere. If you have any questions or you need some more details about this, let us know. We're happy to help you. Um, if you want some more, I, you know, if you need some more information or like some more specs on this specific build, I think we're going to put something together so you can build this exact same model or something similar. But I hope you guys get creative. I hope this helps you, you know, use our towers in any way that you see fit and really just build something that's yours and get growing some food for yourself.